right here was essentially what we looked at last video. And this is my own drawing, which is not a great drawing. A lot of this stuff is more posterior than it needs to be. This is the rectum and the rectum certainly is not as posterior as I have it there. This is the abdomen, belly button, mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, uterus, excuse me, not the uterus, urinary bladder, urethra, uterus, vagina, fallopian tube, ovary. And we talked about all that last time. One thing I want to highlight, because I don't believe I actually said this, everything above this region or above this red line are internal to the body. You would not see these in an individual. The only thing external would be the labia majora, labia minora, and a portion of the clitoris and certainly the mons pubis. Everything else is internal. So I just want to clarify that because I don't think I was super clear with that in the last video. So I titled this video Uterus Plus because we're mainly going to focus on the uterus, but we're also going to talk about the vagina and the uterine tubes. So everything above the line here and up to here is the uterus. And the uterus includes the fundus, which is this curved region. The majority of it, we refer to it as the body. And the most inferior aspect right here is the cervix. Now, what I have drawn here, and this is often how you see a uterus drawn, is an open space that would represent the womb, and that's where an embryo and fetus and baby develop. But in women or females that have never been pregnant, this is actually closed up. So this wall is stuck to this wall and stuck to this wall. Really, it's due to surface tension by the fluid or mucus that is lining that layer of the uterus. And surface tension causes membranes to adhere to each other. So please keep in mind that in females that have never been pregnant, this is actually what's described as a potential space because a space really does not exist. When we talk about layers of the uterus, this green layer all the way around is known as the parametrium. In pink is the myometrium. And in light blue represents the endometrium. Parametrium, myometrium, and endometrium. Myo always refers to muscle. For example, when we say myocardium, that refers to the heart muscle. Myometrium is the muscle of the uterus. There are three types of muscle in the body, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. Myometrium is a type of smooth muscle. The type of tissue that makes up the parametrium is epithelial tissue, specifically simple squamous epithelial tissue, and an underlying areolar connective tissue. And lining the endometrium, or I should say making up the endometrium, is simple columnar epithelial tissue. One thing I want to point out, the body is composed of a number of different types of cells. There are only four types of tissues in the body. We are going to get into all of these, but in short, they are connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. And I tend to say them in that order just so it starts ringing and resonating with you and helps you remember those four tissue types. Connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. And then the uterus here, I've already described three of those tissue types. There are only four tissue types in the body. Coming off the uterus superiorly are these fallopian tubes, otherwise known as uterine tubes and oviducts. And if we take a closer look at that, here is a uterine tube, and this is an ovary, and these represent fimbriae. These are finger-like projections that sweep an ovulated egg from this space right here, into the uterine tube. The uterine tubes in the fimbriae are not physically connected to the ovary. This is the type of tissue that lines the uterine tube. This is what's known as simple columnar epithelial tissue, specifically ciliated simple columnar epithelial tissue. These pink wiggly lines represent cilia, 
which have a motile function, that is to say, they help propel substances from one direction to another. In this case, it's going to sweep the egg down the uterine tube into the uterus. So here we have, we can see these pink lines here are just representing the cilia that I just showed you. We have it on both sides of the uterine tube. Here's the developing egg within the ovary, and when the egg gets released, that is known as ovulation. The fimbri are then going to send sweep that ovulated egg into the uterine tube. Then the cilia will help propel that egg down the uterine tube into the uterus. The endometrium is composed of simple columnar epithelial tissue, just like the fallopian tubes. The big difference is the epithelial tissue of the fallopian tubes have cilia to help propel the egg down into the uterus, whereas the simple columnar epithelial tissue of the endometrium have no cilia. When we look at the vagina down here, it is originally composed of simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. And as you may notice by looking at this, these cells are fairly cuboidal in shape and not tall and elongated like we saw in the columnar. But at puberty, the vagina in females transitions to a stratified squamous epithelial tissue. I'm throwing a lot of terms in here with respect to epithelial tissue. We will talk about epithelial tissue in detail, but the development of the vaginal lining from simple cuboidal epithelial tissue to stratified squamous epithelial tissue is what is known as 